Hi, my name is Graham Lewis and in this short video we're going to look at outliers and use a method called Tukey's method to find and locate these outliers. So let's have a look at a simple example with a small sample of ages of people attending a Justin Bieber concert. And here are the ages here. So have a look at the data. Is anything surprising to you? And hopefully you're looking at this number down here, this 63. And I think it's pretty obvious that this probably is an outlier. Um, so I want you to now consider what would I change this number to so you would not consider it an outlier? Is 50, would that be an outlier? 45, 30. I want you now to write down what number you think would be anything bigger than that number is considered an outlier. And I'll pause the, pause the video whilst you do that. So hopefully you now have a, a number, whatever that be, whether it be 40, 45, 50, of something, an age, that anything above that number is an outlier. But there must be a mathematical way of measuring this. So that's what we're going to consider. Now to be able to do that, we need to know the lower quartile, Q1, uh, the upper quartile, Q3, and the interquartile range. So let's just remind ourselves how to do that. So looking at it, we have 15 numbers. And I think just using our common sense, we know that we'd have seven numbers uh, lower than the median and seven numbers higher than the median. And then the eighth number there is the median. So we know the median, which is two quarters of the way up. So that's also known as Q2, is the median. And that's 18. So we know Q2 is 18. So then if we look at the other numbers, we can see... Uh, if we go a quarter of the way up, just from common sense there, breaking it up, we can see a quarter of the way up, Q1, the lower quartile is 16, and Q3, the upper quartile, is 21. And that's from last class. So now we can work out the interquartile range, which is the distance between the upper and lower quartile. So the interquartile range is equal to Q3, the upper quartile, the third quartile, minus Q1, the lower quartile, so it's 21 minus 16, giving us a number of 5. Now we can use this to actually locate the boundaries for anything bigger than this number is a high outlier, and anything lower than this number is a low outlier. But first I'd like to draw the box plot. So here we have the data in Excel, and I'm just going to quickly copy this and put this into Fathom and remind you how to draw a box plot in Fathom. So you control C, the data, include the title, because that's nice. Go to Fathom, and then in Fathom, if you remember, you pull down a collection, right-click, paste your cases in there, pull down a table, that should have my data in. Yes, it does. Love the sound effects. Pull down a graph, Put grab the age onto the, I prefer it on the x-axis, I know Mr. Towler does as well, and we don't want a dot plot, we want a box plot. And there we have a delightful box plot here. And let's just make this a bit bigger, make it nice and big. And then I'm going to copy this into the OneNote for us. So you can see here very clearly that it's drawn the box plot. So we can see here's Q1. Here's Q3. This distance here is the interquartile range. And you can see it's even identified with a separate little circle, you could use a cross, that that age of 63 was in fact an outlier. But what's the boundary? Let's consider that next. So Tukey's method, which is uh, considered a standard approach for finding an outlier, there are other ways, but this is the most mathematical one that's often used for box plots, um, is for the lower bound, in other words, anything younger than this age to be an outlier, so a very, very young person, say we had somebody who was one year old, maybe that would be an outlier. You take Q1, the lower quartile, which in this case is 16, and you minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Well, 1.5 times 5 is 7.5. So what we've got here is 16 minus 7.5. And that's 8.5 years. Let's see what that looks like visually on our box plot. So what Tukey's method does is it takes the interquartile range, which is 5, multiplies it by 1.5, giving you 7.5, and goes that distance away from the lower quartile, giving me a boundary for an 
outlier, a very young person attended this um, concert as eight and a half years. So we would say anyone less than eight and a half years attending this concert would be an outlier, but there was no one um, 8.5. Now you can see we can go the other way. And so if we take the 7.5 again and we add it to the 21, we get 28.5 round about here. So the upper boundary was actually 28.5. How did that compare to your feel? What number did you have initially when I asked you? So 20 above it, 28.5 is considered an outlier. So what you do when you join the box plot with an outlier is once we know that everything above 28.5 is an outlier, you put the 63 years old here as a dot or a cross, and then you find the next lowest number, which looks here like it's around about 26. So we can double check that on our data. So you don't extend to the 28.5, you extend to your next highest data point. So yes, there it was. The next highest was 26. So we would have that there. And that's our box plot with an outlier. So let's finish off the calculation. So the Q3 here is 21 plus one and a half times the interquartile range is 7.5, giving me anyone above 20.85. 28 and a half years is an outlier and that's how to do Tukey's method now it's your turn so I'd like you to pause the video now please and I want you to actually find q1 q3 and also the interquartile range and then use the formula to find out the upper bound for an outlier and the lower bound for an outlier and hence identify any outliers you can look back at the example in the one note and also you can um, I will go through this once you've had a go. So have a go now, pause the video, and then try this question. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at this, and we can compare numbers. So we've got nine in our data set here. So using common sense, we've got a median of 32, four below 32, four above 32, and then taking these four here, sorry, these five here, we, uh, these four, sorry, here, eight, nine, 10, 21, and 24, we've got halfway there, we get 20. So the lower quartile q1 is 20 same idea uh, q3 is 55.5 from the last lesson so then we can find the interquartile range by subtracting the q3 from the q1 uh, sorry q1 from the q3 so the upper quartile minus the lower quartile and we get 35.5 which is a large spread so that's why in this case it's turned out that there are no actual outliers in this example so 84 is not an outlier and 8 is not an outlier because when we do the upper quartile plus one and a half times the interquartile range comes out at a grand old age of 101.25. And if we do the lower bound, which is Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, it comes out as an impossible age of minus 33.25. Um, so clearly that's not possible. Let's have a look on uh, Fathom what this looks like. So you can see here, I've tried to diagrammatically represent that for you to help you understand what's happening. So Here's the interquartile range, 35.5, which is the distance between our lower quartile Q1 and that upper quartile Q3. You multiply that by 1.5, giving you 53.25. Add it onto the upper quartile, giving you a grand old age of 101.25. Subtract it from Q1, same distance to the left, giving you an impossible age of minus 33.25. And you can see that Fathom has drawn it with no outliers. So the reason this had no outliers is partly because the spread of the interquartile range was far lar larger. This was probably a Pink Floyd concert as opposed to the Justin Bieber concert here, which had a much smaller range, interquartile range, sorry, of people attending um, there, which gave us more possibilities of having outliers. So that's Tukey's method. And then the nice thing is you can do this just purely on Excel for large data, which I'll show you next. So here we have the number of words in a sentence for half-blood prints, and there's a lot of data in here. If we just scroll down, you can see a lot of data. So I've copied all the data, and I'm going to go throw it into Fathom and draw a box plot, and that will find out for me if I've got any outliers. So again, bring down a new collection. Right click, paste cases, bring down a table, bring down a graph, throw the number of words per sentence onto the x-axis, make a box plot, and you can see we've got three outliers here. 
And so three high outliers of very long sentences in um, the half blood print. So let's see if we can do that on Excel. Okay, so to draw a box plot in Excel, which is, um, I prefer Fathom, I have to be honest, but Excel's equally as good. Highlight your data, and I would not include the title. Um, highlight the data. And then once you've got all the data highlight, go to Insert. And you want this button here. It's Insert Statistics Chart. Click on the little down arrow, and there you can see a box plot. Some people call it a box and whisker diagram, uh, which is equally as good. And now you can see that we've got a, uh, whoops, Daisy, a box plot, John. And there you go, we've got a box plot and um, that's it. So notice a few things that are different. It's vertical. It's fine to be vertical. Personally, I prefer them horizontal. And you have to put the chart title in. So you have a little bit more work to do in Fathom. But if you don't have Fathom, um, then this is equally as good. If you want Fathom, um, just ask your teacher and we can tell you how to get Fathom on your laptop, your school laptop. Okay, that's it for me for this video. Please follow on with the rest of the instructions and uh, hope everyone has a great day and that you all know how to now use two keys method to uh, find the boundaries for what are going to be high outliers and low outliers and also that you can draw box plots on Fathom or Excel and that they will give you the outliers instantly, which is perfect. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye.